Hey, welcome to another edition of Times Live on the air. That is on LATimes.com. I'm David Lazarus of the business section. And if you look down, you will see the beauteous Pat Morrison down there. She's over at KPCC Studios right now. She's just finished her afternoon show on FM radio. And we're going to be talking about something near and dear to both of us, not just because we both like to dabble in radio, but because we know, like you know, that Car Talk is an institution and Car Talk is going away, at least new shows. Hi, Pat. Thanks for joining us. Hi, David. I feel like you're the anchor and I'm the reporter. I'm here at KPCC, which carries Car Talk in Southern California, and every car in the parking lot bears on its antenna a black crepe streamer of morning. Oh, what a How's nice that? touch. Nice color. That's, that's what we're looking <laughs> for here. Okay, so well, here's the news that we know. Tom and Ray Maiazzi, click and clack the Tappet brothers, have announced that after 25 years, they're done. They're throwing in the towel. How is it they turned it? They, they put up a blog post that said, time to get even lazier, which kind of speaks to the whole ethos over there. Now, word to the wise, Car Talk is not going away. They're just not doing any new shows. Instead, the producers at NPR are going to mine 25 years worth of archives and keep putting these things together, repackaging them in syndicated form. But, but still, Pat Morrison, th this is really a, a changing of the guards for public radio. David, 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 David. They've done this 35 years, 25 years on national uh, syndication. But I have one word for them. Slackers. The Queen just <laughs> celebrated her 60th Jubilee, and these guys want to get off the air after 25, 35 years. Man up. Well, what's even worse is they're acting like they've solved every car problem out there. I'm sorry. No, they have not. If that were yeah. the case, there'd be no more auto repairs going on, and obviously they are. So these guys are just clearly falling down on the job, leaving us all in a lurch. I agree. And, you know, pretty soon we're going to be hearing the reruns about, I have problems with my Stutz bear cap. This is going to be running when we have our personal jetpacks and people won't even know what a car is. That's, actually, that's how funny they are. Well, too true. Now, let's talk about some of the attraction of car talk. I, I remember when I was younger, I won't say how much younger, but considerably so, the first time I stumbled onto car talk on the radio, I thought, what the heck is this? And then you listen a little more and you realize, they're not just talking about cars, which I could really give two hoots about, they just, they're just being funny. And they are. They had a great shtick. They did. At first, I actually didn't like them because I thought they were, well, just too smart alecky to clean it up a little bit. But then they kind of grow on you. You find out, oh, okay, they went to MIT and they run a garage and, and they really do talk to people about their car problems. They really do figure these things out. So full props to them. And also, these guys seem to genuinely like each other, unlike a lot of siblings I can think of. Sorry, my brother, if you're watching right now. I mean, you know, th those great lines about don't drive like my brother. No, don't drive like my brother. Ah, you know, it's corny, but I like to hear it every time they say it. And I always like to think of how many wives they've had or they say they've had compared to how many cars they've had. And they always sound more affectionate about their cars than their wives, don't they, David? They do indeed. If you're just <laughs> joining us, I'm David Lazarus. I'm chatting with Pat Morrison. And we're talking about the end of new programs of Car Talk on NPR. It's not going away entirely. It's kind of be like Seinfeld, basically. No new episodes, but we're going to see them in syndication, well, probably in perpetuity. But still, this is a, a real transition of sorts. If you if you'd like to chime in on this, and I know you do, you can hit the comment button below on the screen right now. You can also get at us via Facebook, via Google+, or you can tweet us your way. I'll give you the hashtag on that in a moment. We're already seeing some comments coming in, and, and here's one from Santa Monica D that probably encapsulates what everybody's thinking when they heard that the Car Talk guys were calling it quits, and that is, no! And it goes, on, <laughs> it goes on and on in that strain. Here's another one from the Good Fairy who says that uh, we love their ability to laugh at themselves and at their callers. Thank you, Click and Clack, and your attorneys, Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, and the rest of the crew for 25 And don't forget, years. was it the accountant Haywood Jabuzoff? I think so. I would do we cheat him and how. I had to sit and think about it for just a moment the first time I heard it, and I thought, ooh, cool. Nailed that name, that I think, was up on their office, that instead of saying car talk on their office building, I think it said, do we cheat him and how. Well, better still, if you listen to the end of the program, when they ran the credits at the end, lots of funny stuff would appear in there as well on a routine basis. Their assistants, their accountants, everybody else, they had the funniest names, and you really did have to listen twice. And I think that the reaction is these guys have managed to make this subject accessible. I mean, they were marriage counselors half the time, David. How many times did you hear a caller start with, 
my wife says or my husband says or my boyfriend says and know exactly where that one was going. Now, I don't want to speak out of school here, but there was a lot of stories today talking about how the Mayotzi boys are going to be ending their live programs. I got some news for everybody. This was never a live program. These Bada guys bing. recorded, and this was a very heavily produced program. Uh, I mean, Pat, they did a really good job of hiding that, didn't they? Yeah, like, you know, you and I, we really are live, right? Right, right? No, but no, no, guys... I'm completely on tape right now. You're just talking. Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was your avatar. <laughs> <laughs> but they but... did such a good job. And you were so engaged, and you were absolutely sure that you were listening at any moment for somebody to go off a cliff, metaphorically. And, uh, and they always kept pulling it back, just like those cars they saved when they really shouldn't have. Exactly. Pluto. And, and when I used to listen earlier on, I always had this image in my head of these two guys sitting at a table, sounded, surrounded by children's auto repair manuals. You know, those big, thick puppies. Looking and, it up really fast. <laughs> looking it up really fast. That's exactly right. And so when I first learned, after I kind of started talking to some radio folk, that's not the case at all. They've got producers all around them doing all this, and they're setting everything up. I thought, oh, I like that other image much better. I did, too. But still, they were wonderful to listen to. And just think... The merchandising opportunities will have to go on. I was looking at the merchandise, and there was this one which particularly caught my eye because they always said that NPR was embarrassed to be associated with them. And there were shirts and mugs that said, I heart NPR, even car talk. And there was one, their motto was um, unencumbered by the thought process. And they had a mug that had that in English on one side and in Latin on the other side. I may have to get one of those. Yeah, who wouldn't? Now, these guys weren't universally loved, I have to say. I'm again dipping into some of the comments that have come in. And uh, here's one from Godzilla who says, good riddance to a pair of chattering, obnoxious buffoons. Now, if only NPR would cancel all their talk shows and just play classical music. Dude, come on. Get with the program oh, a little bit. I know, right? Da, 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 Thank you. Da, 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 and here's another one. Wait, I got more. This one's from Edgar who says, they often gave foolish and inaccurate advice and fooled around too much. Edgar, I mean, what are you saying? The advice You're not, not paying them by the hour. Exactly. Right? But also the fooling around. That's why you listen to this show. These guys wrote the book on how you do this kind of thing. And really what they should do as they wrap it up is go back to a lot of their best questions, their most confounding questions, and find out how they turned out. Did they really fix, you know, that 1956 Dodge with the big problems? Did the husband and wife split over the argument over the Corvair? You know, knowing the Mayotte brothers, minds want to know. but at least knowing these guys over there, I would say they couldn't care less, <laughs> <laughs> all things considered. <laughs> but you know what, when, when we talk about sort of this, this evolution that's going on in public radio right now, I'm not trying to get too serious or, or downbeat or anything, but car talk was, you know, it's an institution, and then on the other side of the spectrum, you've got Prairie Home Companion and Garrison Keillor, not in the best of health, you could say. And an institution unto himself. You betcha, although he talks a little too slowly for some of our liking. Uh, or for say. people in Boston. Thank well, you. Well, there it is. So once we start seeing these shows not just sprouting gray hair, but actually getting ready to shuffle off this mortal coil, does NPR outlast that? Uh, you have to have some of that quirky factor in there. And I know you and I try to do this, David, when we're on the air at KPCC. The other day I had Miles Davis playing under me as I read White House pool reports as if they were beat poetry. You've got to try something a little different. I kind of hope that the car talk guys would have been proud of me. I agree with you. I, I think public radio kind of deservedly gets a bit of a bad rap for being a little stuffy. That uh, Saturday Night Live skit about, you know, food talk or whatever it is, good times, <laughs> uh, kind of nailed it right on the head. And one of the great things about Car Talk was these were two guys who weren't afraid to come in, put down the top, drive the convertible around for a little bit, to use the appropriate metaphor, and let the air get in a little bit, which is something public radio could stand to do a bit more of. They made fun of themselves, they made fun of their program, they made fun of their listeners. It was not at all solemn. And maybe that's what some of the critics didn't like about it, but boy, it was a tremendous audience for 25 years as a national show. It's true. And, and bringing a sense of humor into the proceedings was, for public radio purposes, revolutionary. I mean, it was unheard of for public radio to try and be funny until these guys showed up with a deliberate shtick involved, and suddenly it was good. And you look at the, the new generation of, of NPR stars, like Ira Glass, for example, who's terrific. I mean, I, I love Ira Glass's show. 
but it's a whole different critter than Car Talk. Yeah, yeah, and you have to think with the ratings that Car Talk got, people didn't have to own a car to enjoy this show. I mean, you just know that people in New York um, who never get behind the wheel of a car, whose idea of driving is making right turns at five miles an hour to look for a parking spot, they love Car Talk too. Well, and, and it's really a, a testimony to how powerful and influential Car Talk became that in, in various pitch meetings that I've been involved with, both for radio and for television, at some point, because they're typically going to be about money or financial matters, somebody always says, well, it'll be like Car Talk, but about money. And that's oh, the that shorthand. sounds like a classic pitch meeting, yeah. Exactly, and you instantly get what you're talking about. Oh, Car Talk, but with money, I get it, or Car Talk, but with sports. Yeah, and it's like Godzilla it. and My Dinner with Andre. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's it's car talk meets Macbeth, you know, like you that. Go. Classic <laughs> pitch meeting. <laughs> so what about have you talked to uh the guys at KPCC? Is Car Talk gonna keep running after the live show stop in October and then uh stay in the same slot or are they gonna move the schedule? I think the bit? beauty of it is syndication. It's going to be I Love Lucy reruns and Car Talk reruns. And I think they may cut them up and mix them up a little bit. What I, I don't know is whether anybody's going to follow up and find out if the people who had called in low those many years ago even had those cars or, you know, you're hearing a voice from out of beyond on the air. Well, let me ask the question that everyone's wondering right now, and that is, Pat, once you decide to throw in the towel, your old shows on KPCC will go into syndication as well. Won't Absolutely. They? What's a towel? <laughs> I wouldn't know myself. <laughs> I'm just hoping that they syndicate my little fill-in spots, and that's going to be a much smaller gene pool, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, news is so hard to syndicate, except it does feel like sometimes we're doing the same stories again and again, especially when it comes to Congress. This is all very true. Pat Morrison, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation Mwah. about Car Talk. Mwah, back at you. I'm David <laughs> Lazarus. We have been talking about the end of new live shows of Car Talk, but not to worry. They're going to stick around in perpetuity in syndication. Want to make your thoughts heard? You can post a comment below. You can get at us via Facebook. You can get at us via Google+. You can get at us via Twitter. I'm David Lazarus. Thanks to Pat Morrison. See you in the business section.